Now, the media is filled with all kinds of stories of people who are saying, we want sports. How many of you have been seeing that? All over, everyone's saying, we want basketball, we want football back, we want to see baseball, we want all this stuff to come back. Sports being something that's really uh, vital to a lot of people's entertainment and enjoyment during this time of social distancing. Well, baseball in particular is one sport that they're trying to come back. And baseball was my mother's favorite sport. She loved to watch baseball. She would be an excellent Braves fan. She has passed away, but she loved watching baseball on television. And if she had the chance to go to a casual neighborhood baseball game at a park or a church baseball game, she was number one fan. She loved watching baseball. For her, it was a simple sport, and it was easy to understand. The rest of the sports seemed to be too challenging. She says, I don't understand why they do this or they do that in these sports, but baseball, it's so simple. The focus is on the home plate and what's going on there, and it all just begins at the home plate. Well, it seems kind of basic, but sometimes people don't always get the basic things down. I remember a Sunday school picnic, a church gathering where everyone had come together to enjoy fine food and sharing in fellowship, and it culminated with an impromptu baseball game. And of the Sunday school kids that came forward to play, oh, there were a variety of different ages that all gathered and different skills and abilities, and some who had never played stepping up to base to home plate to say, I want to play as well. I remember little Davy. He was a six-year-old who was filled with all kinds of wild, enthusiastic energy, and he was ready to run. When it was his turn to get up to base, when he came to home plate, they, was, they handed him the bat, but he threw the bat down and just took off running. And as he began to run like crazy around the bases, they said, oh, no, no. His father was coaching him and saying, no, no, go back, go back, go back to home base first. Hit the ball and then run. Go back to home base first. Little Davy seemed to have the donkey ahead of the horse. In life, sometimes we're in the same position where we take off running before we even had a chance to hit the ball. In our spiritual life, this is so true because maybe we need to learn the lesson that everything begins at home plate. Everything begins there. And when it comes to our spiritual life, where is that home plate? But that home plate is within. Everything begins within. Over my 42 years of work as a pastor, I've encountered many people of different spiritual crossroads in their life, some who've been running and found the game of spirituality to be discouraging, and others who found this encounter with God to be somewhat disenchanting, because what's happened is they've gone off running. They've taken off without beginning at home base. They've taken off running and they found that maybe that which they thought to be true for their spiritual life just didn't unfold in the way that they anticipated or expected it to be. And my encouragement has always been, let's get back to home base. Let's get back to home plate. Let's go to the very beginning, that place where it all starts for us and it happens deep within our lives. The Bible illustrates this as one of Jesus' great teachings his great illustrations. He told the story of the prodigal son. And there he's unfolding this great analogy for our lives. Like little Davy, he takes off running. The prodigal wants to leave home. Thinking that there's nothing at home base of any great value, takes off to run and find uh, the opportunities to seek out his success and his greatest life, only to realize the greatest life and success, it all started at home. It was there. And then he returns back to that starting place. And he discover everything that he was always looking for was right there. It had always been there. Everything begins there. Everything begins at home plate then. We might take that analogy to heart and think, ask ourselves, have we been like little Davy at times running off without starting at home plate? starting with the basics of going within, and sometimes it's so crucial that we just get back to simple basics in our spiritual life. We get attracted by all the wonderful things. I want to run here, I want to run there, I want to do this, I want to do that. But unless we begin at the beginning spot, at the starting place, at the home plate, unless we begin there, everything we do does not have the wonderful power of manifestation. It's not as fruitful as we may desire. 
That there, that, that place for our spiritual life is deep within us. Home plate is deep within our consciousness, deep within the silence of our lives. And I find that sometimes as people have been running off with the trapping religion, all the rituals and joyous outward expressions saying, oh, I can't wait to go to church to sing, shake a tambourine, dance, jump up and down. I can't wait to go to church to, you know, just offer, get my praise on and all those kind of wonderful things. And we get caught up, nothing wrong with those, but we get caught up in the outward expressions without first beginning with the inward. And so often, quite often, we walk away thinking, well, we've had a shallow experience. We wonder where's the richness and the depth of this divine expression of cold God. I'm not feeling it. I'm not getting acquainted with it. I'm not seeing the results that I so desire within my heart. We even find that some traditions uh, of Christianity or religions will try to teach us to be uncomfortable with going within. Oh, don't be caught up, on, caught up in the silence. Don't get too quiet because that teaching of meditation or contemplation certainly is not of God. It's not within our Western tradition, they may say. Yet Jesus was teaching from an Eastern tradition and speaking to us and teaching us from an Eastern tradition where the power of going within was so essential. It's the place where you begin, you begin your spiritual experience there it is this wonderful awakening of consciousness. It's the quiet that we engage in. It's the stillness that we experience where we're in the consciousness, this awareness of a divine presence. It's within us. It always has been. It's always been there. And the distractions that we have in our life is that the teachings may be that God is somewhere else. God is out there, not within that God is to be experienced in some activity outward rather than going deep within and discovering within the silence. And so we take off running, trying to find God. Yet all along, God has been within. We find Hebrews 13, 5 coming to alive. I will never leave you nor forsake you is what the spirit of presence of God is. Has never left us, never forsaken us, but always with us, always has been, is right now, and always will be never leaving, never departing. Matthew 28, 20, lo, I am with you always. I am with you always. There is never a moment where the divine presence is not with you, walking with you. The key is, well, we sometimes are not aware and not awakened to it. We have been distracted. We get disenchanted. Our thoughts go elsewhere because it hasn't been what we anticipated or expected but when we go within, we find this rich discovery of where it begins for our lives, and it begins to unfold from there in proper order for us. The scripture then encourages us to understand, seek ye first. First, this is the beginning. This is the home plate of our spiritual journey. First, this is the place of our daily work of seeking, seeking this awakening to truth, seeking the kingdom within. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first this kingdom within. Jesus spoke about it. Being within our hearts and our lives, not without, not a place, not a destination, but that which is found deep within us. Kingdom meaning the realm of God, the dwelling, the very presence, the consciousness of this divine experience. Seek it first and everything else will be added unto you. Seek it first. That means to know it first to experience it first, to discover it first. We're often looking with our five senses and we're caught up in this physical world. And so we're always looking for the tangible, that which we can touch and hear and see and feel. And we want all of our spiritual life to be embraced by the physical without realizing, wait a minute, it's a spiritual life, not a physical life that we're living. And the spiritual invites us to move beyond the limitations of that physical to move beyond, to find and discover all kinds of things that have always been there. I encounter so many people, I'm looking for love. I want to encounter love. I want to experience love, and they're running to find love. But love is found within. First, find it within yourself, and then you'll be able to discover it all around you, in you, through you, and for you. And you can actually then begin to give it away. 
if you haven't found it first within, if you haven't gone within, if you haven't discovered the kingdom, the presence of God that is all encompassing this divine love, if you haven't found it first, you're not going to be able to give it to someone else or experiencing, experience it to its fullness. So with go within and you'll find the kingdom or the realm of God, this kingdom of heaven. It's all the same. Heaven being a higher consciousness, the realm of God being this great understanding and awakening to the realm of the divine awareness. This wonderful place then that is found within is found in spirituality, in a spiritual journey and not in the physical. Let me tell you, as spiritual teachers, we find the most difficult work is getting our students to recognize that heaven is a condition of the mind. That's one of the hardest things. Because so many people have been embraced in in teaching this is heaven is a place we go when we die. Oh, I hope you'll go to heaven. Or are you going to heaven? Or do you know if you die, you'll go to heaven? Are some of the spiritual questions people ask. And they're always talking about this destination and this place that one day we may arrive at. So we're always thinking of going to heaven rather than being in heaven. For heaven is this wonderful condition of mind. Jesus evidently experienced the same difficulty that spiritual teachers are having today because he wanted to make himself understood. So he gave illustration after illustration. So many accounts of the numerous parables and comparisons are found within the scripture where he began to say, I'm trying to describe to you, this is what the kingdom of heaven is is all about. This is what the realm of God is all about. This is what it's like. It's to be experienced in mind, in consciousness. Not a destination we go to when we die, for that consciousness will be with us throughout all of eternity. But it's to be experienced here and now in this powerful moment and embracing it in this way. So often we have been struggling with this Yet the Lord's Prayer, so beautifully sung by Lisa Van Osh today, we appreciate it. That beautiful message in music. It's a beautiful prayer. And so often we don't understand all the nuances of this prayer and how amazingly metaphysical it is and how it's filled with all the nuances of the teaching of the new thought genre of explaining and understanding for us the whole awareness of how we begin at home plate how we begin our spiritual life, how we go within, it begins by first acknowledging our creator, our father. That term is our source, the source of all to be, the source of all goodness, the source of all love, acknowledging it first and foremost. And when we go within, we have to say, wait a minute, God dwells within our hearts, not without, not outside. God dwells in our consciousness, in our condition of our mind, not outside, not God as some being out there in space, but the divinity, that wonderful presence doing within our source, which are in heaven. Heaven, what is this higher consciousness? The source is found where? In higher consciousness. Heaven being this wonderful awareness this higher awakening, this state of enlightenment. Our divine source is found there. And if we're going there, we're going to find all this that is the richness, the goodness, the wonderful joys of heaven, all the joys of this wonderful divine experience of infinite possibilities. Hallowed be thy name. Meaning holy is the character of this divine presence within me. It's within my consciousness. And I awaken to this divine character. It's perfect. It's whole. It's complete. That divine character dwells within me. Wow, how wonderful it is to stand in front of the mirror and say, I am the revelation of this divine character. I too am whole and complete. For the source is in my higher consciousness. Right here and now, that source, I'm fully aware of its divine perfection and it's at work within me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth, in the physical plane, just as it is in the spiritual plane of heaven. So it is on earth, it is in heaven, so it is on heaven, it is on earth, where we are now inviting this oneness to happen within our life, this proclamation that we're saying, I want all the goodness of this divine expression we call God, 
this divine expression that we call heaven, this higher consciousness. I want it here, now, in the physical plane, on this earth, in this moment, right here, today. I say that thy kingdom come. I invite this awareness to come into my life right here and now. I am raising my consciousness to this higher level where I'm now full of this divine expression that the will of God, this divine expression is at work. It's working in me, through me, around me, and always for me right now on earth, in the physical plane, just as it is in my higher consciousness of thought, in my higher dwelling of great faith. Oh, give us this day our daily bread. Now speaking in the awareness of this consciousness, let this awakening now give me my daily bread. Oh, we're not talking about a loaf of bread in the physical context. We're not taking, oh, give me a wonderful slice of whole wheat or how about some wonder bread? We're talking about Give me that which nurtures my soul for bread is that symbol of the nurturing of the soul, what feeds the soul. And that's what feeds the soul is the bread of new understanding, new awakening, new clarity of mind. Give me this day right here now, a new awakening, a new clarity of thinking, a greater understanding. That's what I so desire. I'm going deep within. I'm at home plate right now. I am acknowledging the source within and its holy character, its completeness. I'm acknowledging that this kingdom, this awareness has come within me right now in this physical plane. And I proclaim, give me this day, this day. Let this consciousness bring me at all times a higher level of understanding that feeds my soul. Let me be fed within. Oh, let me understand. Let me have a ha's. Let me awaken to new truths. Let me have this wonderful spiritual life that's ever growing, ever expanding, ever evolving. I want to receive all the wisdom of God that's available for my life. I want to know I'm hungry. I want some bread. I want some bread of new understanding to come to my life. It says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It's really addressing Allow our consciousness to do the work of forgiving ourselves. Hold in mind, if I'm going to do anything at all in this work of life, I need to first forgive myself. Forgive myself of mistakes, errors, places where I've fallen short. Just to forgive myself. Say, you know, it's okay. Pick yourself up and go again. Like a loving parent, a consciousness that would be around a little new uh, young child that's learning to walk, where that loving parent would say, honey, you've fallen, but get right back up. You can do it. Come on, come on. I'm cheering you on. I know you can. I know you can. Come on. You're doing so good. Left foot, right, left foot. Come on, come on. Come to daddy. Come to mommy. You might say, you know how it is in parenting, the encouragement we offer. So it is that we need to do the same for ourselves in our spiritual life that say, I want to first forgive myself for all those shortfalls, those shortcomings, those moments of error, the times when I've fallen and made a mistake. And the Spirit is saying, this consciousness is saying, come on, get back up. Because as we begin that work of forgiveness within ourselves first, Suddenly, we're then gifted with the ability to forgive others. Because let me tell you, if you don't own it first, there's no way you can give it to somebody else. If you don't understand it first, there's no way you can pass it on to someone else. And that's why so many people have trouble forgiving because they haven't done the work of forgiving themselves first and giving themselves this wonderful experience of grace. Grace, that's it's okay. Come on, do it again, pick it up. You can get up and walk. I know you can. It's grace that is unmerited favor that's ever being extended to our lives. And so when we pray, forgive us our debts, forgive us our errors, forgive us our mistakes, forgive us those things that where we've fallen short as we forgive others the very same. Oh, and then it goes on. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, wait a minute. We know this prayer is not a prayer then to the divine presence of God, but it is speaking of our consciousness 
Because God's not going to lead us into temptation. Do you think God would say, hey, you know what, Amy, I think I'm going to lead you down astray here. You know what? You know, we're going to do some little wild and crazy thing over here. Hey, John, we're going to do the same, you know? How about it? You know, David, come on. I'm going to lead you in a pathway of temptation here. We think God would do that now. So we know that that's not what's being addressed there. What's being addressed is our consciousness. Don't let our thoughts lead us into temptation, but to speak about a higher consciousness of understanding that says, I know, I know you're not going to lead me. I know it because I know the divine presence of God is at work in my mind, in my thoughts, in my very being, in my essence. From within me, I now speak that I am not being led into any kind of temptation, but I'm delivered from all evil. And what is evil? It's simply error. Error thinking, that's all. We made a mistake in our thinking and not thinking of the highest and best of the world around us and for ourselves. So we embrace that which may seem contrary to the good. We call it evil. It's simply error, error thinking. So what we're praying is we open our consciousness as we're there going within. What we're saying is deliver us, set me free from any kind of error thinking that has embodied my consciousness. I release it. I let it go. I don't want to entertain those thoughts that are error in my thinking, but I now think of the highest and best, the all good. I unfold that which is at work in my life for the highest and best within me. For thine is the kingdom or we might say thine is the consciousness, or this is the consciousness. For this is the consciousness, we might sing. Uh, for it is this consciousness that is power. It is in this way of thinking that there's power in our life. That's what it's proclaiming. When we begin to speak it in that affirmative way, we're saying this way of thinking, going within and finding the divine source and knowing its heavenly essence it's all good within me and knowing its holy character and knowing that I want it to unfold in me right now in this place on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm knowing that it's giving me this daily bread, this new understanding, and it's leading me in this wonderful pathway that's keeping me from any kind of error. I now proclaim this is the consciousness for thine is the kingdom and the power to overcome, the power to be liberated, the power to be set free is yours, and the glory. What's the glory? Ah, the glory is the revelation. When it's revealed, ooh, it's glorious. It's beautiful. For this consciousness, this way of thinking, then is the power, and it is the revelation of the divine. It is that which is revealing all good, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen is what? And so it is. And so it is. Sort of like we seal the deal of that which we've prayed and proclaimed. So the going within, the discovery of that first base begins with the discovery of the divine source within you in a higher consciousness ever wanting to lead and guide you, ever wanting to give you a new understanding and to take you to a higher place of, uh, of fulfillment in your life. For then we find this wonderful harmony with the divine mind. God's mind is our mind. We've now come into alignment. We've adjusted everything as we have spoken this prayer. And we don't say this prayer over and over again as if it's some sort of rote prayer, but it's an example of how we might pray and what we might claim for our lives each and every day as we think of this prayer as an example, as a guide for our lives, that we might understand this is how we become in sync and we, how we become aligned with the very divine presence. We become conscious, aware of the divine mind. And we then adjust our thoughts to this divine standard. We move on up to this higher level of thinking where we are now dwelling in the all things are possible realm. That's right. We're moving on up. We're climbing the ladder to the place where our day-to-day -day thoughts are. Everything is possible. We've left behind the doubt, the fear, the question, the wondering. And we've moved on up. 
thy kingdom come. This higher consciousness has come. It's come to us. It's within us now. I think what would be real fascinating is if there was a sequel to the prodigal story, to the prodigal son. You know, act two, I'd love to see it. You know how today's popular movies are all coming out with sequels. They're moving you on as the, in a trilogy maybe of how the story's unfolding. I'd love to see the sequel now of the prodigal son who is now living from a different perspective. He ran away, running as he could to try to find life and it's all of its fulfillment and only to discover he wanted to return back home because that's where life and all the fulfillment was. At home base, at home plate, to begin there. Now the sequel might be, he's now living back at home. And he's laughing at those who want to run from home. You silly fool, how crazy you may be. Oh, I tried that. I was out running, but I realized I had to go back to home plate. I needed to come back home to go within. And when I went within, I found the richness and the fullness I can imagine the sequel where the prodigal son is expounding all this good news and saying, oh, if you only knew, if you only knew what I've experienced. Yes, I was running like crazy. I was running thinking I was doing the right thing. I was going all about, but I didn't realize it was already at home. That was the place where I wanted to be. That's where all the fulfillment was. It was found within, going in the stillness, into the quiet, into that divine presence. So today I invite you to get familiar with the kingdom, to get familiar with a higher consciousness, to become familiar with a greater awareness and tour the kingdom. That's right. Today I'd like to be your tour guide. Let's go on a tour of this higher consciousness, this dwelling of the divine presence. Let's go to this place where we get so familiar with it that you begin to understand everything that this consciousness wants to unfold for us. We become so familiar with the kingdom of God. We become so familiar with the realm of God. We become so familiar with the divine presence of God. We have known all the aspects, and we now find an intimacy, an intimacy that even begins with a discovering of, I know how I'm made. I know how, who I am. I've discovered my true nature. I realize that once I've come to this higher consciousness, I now understand who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. And all that of God is there for us. You see, once we've toured the kingdom, once we've gone in deep intimacy with the divine presence, we've become so familiar with our divine source. We know where we've come from, come from the all good, and we're children of God. Jesus had a technique of developing this spiritual mindedness to awakening this consciousness, to help people to get to that home plate. He had a technique and he acknowledged, acknowledged for himself to be the son of God. The reason we've not seen this technique expressed in our Christian traditions in the Western world, because so often we've looked at Jesus as the great exception, not the great example. Oh, that could only be for Jesus. Oh, that's only about Jesus. Oh, that's only for Jesus. Oh, these stories we're reading, they're only about Jesus. They have nothing to do with us. And we miss the beautiful teaching that Jesus lived out for he began to acknowledge himself as the son of God, acknowledging that he was God manifesting himself in the form of man and able to teach from this perspective. He did not see himself different from us. Woo. Wow. He didn't see himself different than us. But he saw that the power of God was living in him in a upper room consciousness, you might say, in a higher consciousness. And in this, he became our great example, our way shower, our master teacher, showing us this is the pathway for the journey of our life. So what comes to us is that when we become so intimate with the divine presence, when we have toured the kingdom of God, when we have really become so familiar with it, we understand we too can call ourselves sons of God. And we can proclaim that 
and claim our good and affirm, I am a perfect child of God. Just as Jesus was talking about this universal truth and its expression, he was speaking this as an example for us to the same. Proclaim it, announce it, share it, speak it to yourself. Stand up in front of the mirror the first thing in the morning and proclaim, I am the perfect child of God. I'm the son of God. I'm that child and I know who my divine source is. I know where I come from. I'm so familiar with it that I understand my potential. That's true. A lot of times we don't understand our full potential because we're not so familiar with who we are and where we've come from in this divine source within our life. We haven't gone within enough to acknowledge all this good that's there and the potential that's within us to come forth. We're not even familiar with this divine potential. So let's get familiar with the source. So familiar that we realize that we are one and there's no separation. Jesus likened the kingdom to a seed because a seed has unexpressed capabilities. A little seed, unexpressed capabilities. But it needs to be planted in a soil best suited for its growth. This very truth that we're talking about of going deep within, going to home plate, of starting at the beginning, of seeking first, is the seed that we need to plant within our receptive mind that will bring forth great fruit. So let us get to work. Let's start revealing. Let's start doing what we came here to do. Let's go to home plate. Let's start at the starting point. Let's seek the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. Seek this higher consciousness. Let's use this divine example of prayer, of the Lord's Prayer, as a guideline of how we might get to that innermost being, a place a place within us, get our priorities straight and let us understand that we may have been running off, but come on back to home plate. And let me tell you, when you're there, that's where you hit a home run. That's where you hit a home run. Get back to home plate. Amen.